Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, how to create shader networks. So we're going to start by creating uh, some different shader networks and having a look at some of the different uh, render nodes that we can plug into. And I'll just explain the sort of um, uh, breakdown of what, what a shader network is. So if we click inside the render node create window and click on surface, we'll then get a range of different surfaces or materials that we can use. Um, let's stick to the Lambert. So the Lambert is a matte surface and if I bring up my Arnold or Mental Ray if, you prefer, if you've got that installed and I'll turn it onto like a interior and I've got it onto the shader ball as well. So we get a, a, an updated preview um, that gets rendered into this window here. So this is uh, basic material, um, but what we can do is we can plug in different render nodes into different attributes. So let's just uh, work with the color for the, for the start. So under color, if I click on this little icon uh, here, that will connect the node that we select directly and plug it straight into to there. So let's start with the 2D uh, textures and easy one to start with is the Lambert. So just to uh, remap that material, if you haven't got it all working down there, I can click on this button here and that will remap the material like so. So in our preview you can see the update, what's happened there and you can see under color now we have this little connection um, this little icon indicating that there's a connection and if we click on that we'll go to the checker node so that is visually represented here as well in the in in this in this hierarchy um, I'll just undo that so what we can also do is as you just saw, I'll just reconnect it, um, is we can break the hierarchy. Now if you want to break the hierarchy from the attribute editor, you right click on the, the word and say break connection and that will break it. If you want to reconnect something, you can reconnect out the outputs. So in this case we've got an alpha out, but we've also got a color out. So I'll take the color and I'll plug it straight into to there. Um, we don't need to worry about the this node so much. It's these nodes that are most important. So I'll just map those guys um, so just to make some space. And what we can see here is we've got the texture node and attached to that is a placement node. Um, the placement node uh, determines how much the you know where the how the texture is projected and so this is a 2d placement texture node so it would require that this model have a good UV map uh, you know that's um, a flat representation of it um, so let's have a look first at what we can do with the 2d placement node uh, you can tell it to only take up you know half half of the object um, in both uh, U and V. So like that, or we can say one. Uh, we can also um, rotate the frame around if we wanted to, like so. And probably the most um, useful one is the repeat UV. So repeat UV is at 4 at the moment so if I change that back to 1 that will mean that we only get like 1 1 1 let's change it to another object so we can see it a bit better so let's go just sphere yeah or just plane so it's just repeated once there but if I change that say to 12 it's going to be repeating 12 on the U and 12 on the V, like so. Go back to the shader ball. So it's a good way to, you know, uh, repeat the the um, texture over and over again. 
Okay, so the other thing that we can have a look at here is the actual uh, render node, the checker or the procedural checker. So its attributes, um, it's got two, two different colors. We can change the color, uh, select different colors if we want. And, you know, like so. Or we can even change the contrast between those through this slider. Um, we've got some other effects as well. We can change the alpha gain if we want to make it more transparent and, and so forth. Um, but we'll just leave that. And so that's, that's about it for that one. So let's have a look at um, some other materials that we can make. So let's go up and we'll create a new material. This time I'm going to create another Lambert and I'll map the Lambert. Let's just map the input. And instead of going through the attributes um, of that material over here, we can come directly from the 2D placement nodes and uh, we can uh, put in the, the attribute that we want. So um, at this stage there's some other you know procedurally generated textures that you might be interested in like this one here that you can you know change the width and so forth. Um, could use it for you know windows or, or, or whatnot. Um, again it'll have color, different colors that you can use like so uh, and, and the, as well as a placement node it's repeating four times at the moment but you could you know up that as well um, the cloth is okay um, if it's really small um, and repeating a lot more than than say four so let's take that up to 24 like so and this time I'm going to plug it in just manually so I'll go color and into color like like so so you can see that sort of working there um, besides these sort of uh, oh, there's a grid there as well that can be quite useful but other things like fractals can be really handy. So, um, like, instead of uh, creating a node and then connecting them, what we can do is we can actually drag by middle mouse clicking on the, the node and dragging it and just dropping it onto um, where we want it to be connected. Oh, that did not work. Let's try that again. Uh, it might need to be yeah, connected straight into the property editor now. So we'll go property editor and we'll just drop that straight on to there like that. Um, again, we've got a whole lot of attributes that you can change depending on you know what, what sort of look you're going for. So these are procedurally generated textures and um, you know algorithms to give you variation and so forth and this is really good for background stuff um, uh, can be can be used to you know make quick textures and and so forth of you know not the hero elements and and whatnot um, let's have a look keep going down so one of the, besides the noise, um, you can even put a, a video through the movie. Um, you can also use uh, image files, of course, um, through the file node. And maybe we'll have a quick look at that as well. So I'll just grab the file node, plug the color into the color, and the file node itself. And here we have a name, click on that and just go to the desktop and let's see what I've got in here and you know there's there's the texture and now it's applied over to the object so 
Um, when we look at UV maps, we'll look at how to get the texture to line up on the object how you want it. Um, and we'll, we'll be doing that in another video. So let's just take those off for a sec. Um, as well as that, the ramp is super useful. So the ramp's really good. Not only can you know you just create a gradient, um, which can be really useful, um, but even if you're just using sort of like plain colors, it can help to sort of like give it a little bit more detail and, and so forth. So uh, well worth utilizing. If you're using just a plain color in the background, think about using a ramp. So think about, say, I've got this pink, or let's go to this blue color, like so. And how this ramp works is I've got these, I can click on the top one and move it around. If I click on the bottom one, I delete it. If I click anywhere and drag, I'll make a new one. If I want to change that color, I can then change the color inside of here, like so. Oh, let's make it a little bit like so. So you can see, you know, it, it has a really nice effect going across it. Um, not only can you do that, you could add multiple colors in here and making, you know, sort of banding or I'll just pull those guys out like so. Um, or you can also take that and you can add some noise to it. So it's now going to, you know, manipulate and move around. It's probably easy to see it on a plane at this stage. So you can make some quite interesting uh, textures and so forth this way. And see that noise pattern going through, which can be quite good. So not only can you do, uh, you know, just plain colors, but anywhere you can see that there's a, you know, a color like this, we can add in additional stuff. So I could add in my check and chuck it on top of there, like so. And now my check's coming through inside my ramp. Make it a bit tighter from the top and bring it down. See it's sort of like playing inside there. Just type in here, layer. There is layer texture, that is what I'm after. Okay. So the layer shader allows you to have different materials. So you can have a Lambert and a blend together and have, um, you know, uh, which is really, really quite good. However, it's just a little bit more complicated. So let's just start with the layered texture. And where, I think that's under mental ray, under Maya, sorry. And let's see if I can find it there. Uh, other textures, oh, there it is, other textures like so. So how this works is we can plug the out color, I'll plug that straight into into here, and if I click on it you'll see that we've got this area down the bottom here and if I click in this area I can then make a new texture in that area. Um, so the one on the far left is the main texture, so if I move that if I can move it, no, middle mouse drag, there we go. Now it turns all blue. So what is kind of cool is that you can use the opacity, right? And uh, um, should be able to see an update. There we go. Um, and we can hide one material through through another. So for example, Let's go in and in this blue, instead of having blue, let's put, um, say, a fractal, like so. And then in the fractal, 
what we'll do is we'll assign the uh, sorry assign the fractal as the alpha as well and we'll go over like so and I would expect it to be there he goes there's an update so what's happened is um, we now see through the uh, the black bits in our texture so if we change the amplitude to that we can then reveal one one from the other and so forth which is kind of kind of cool and maybe we'll go sphere like so so for instance you know if I wanted to turn this into so this is the the, the color there um, maybe I'll turn that into a, a ramp and I'll make that uh, blue so it's like a a sphere and I'll even put ice um, you know caps at the top one at the top and one at the bottom like so and I'll make more of it blue 